Hey, it's your host Dan once again. Just wanted to show a project I did on a pair of speakers I have here at home. This is a repair, rebuild, upgrade all at the same time. My speakers are Klipsch KLF 20s and I'm sure a lot of the people who have the KLF line are probably in the know that the manufacturer kind of has an inherent defect in these speakers that uh, centers around the baffle boards uh, flopping loose over time. They weren't really secured properly. Uh, number one, the glue that they used is not the greatest. Uh, it only sits on a 3 8 inch recessed edge. And also the back side of the baffles have a melamine surface, which nothing really wants to stick to melamine, so that further compounds the problem. So I noticed this at first because uh, I was cranking some tunes one day and something just didn't sound right. And further inspection, I found out that the front baffle boards were you know themselves vibrating along with the speakers which isn't good um, that just translates your sound into kind of mud right there because you're not getting the sound coming off the speaker it's the speakers vibrating it's getting translated and vibrating the baffle board itself so I knew I was gonna have to go through this process to completely rebuild the speaker It was about a 30 hour uh, build process yeah, and I just kind of really took my time with this. I didn't want to have anything break or crack. I want everything to go back together exactly the way it was unscathed. So if I flip the speaker sideways, you can see there's a couple braces already in there from side to side, which is good. I'm kind of surprised they put those in there, but uh, what really I would think would really need it would be uh, on the woofers, especially in between where those two tens are from front to back because that wood's really thin right there. But we're going to rebuild it. We're going to put some added bracing in it. And uh, But the first step was to get these baffles off of the speaker, which took at least an hour or more per side per speaker because I had to stick my arm through the hole with a paint scraper and keep pushing that glue away, keep pushing that glue away, you know, a little at a time just going around the whole perimeter and trying to you know give it a little tug is it gonna move nope you know keep going around just do it really slow because I don't want to damage the baffle because I don't want to have to remake it so uh, once I got the baffles off front and back both sides took about maybe another hour or so per speaker because I had to go around the perimeters and scrape all the glue residue out of there to get that all off I moved the shells out into the garage and I started cutting some three-quarter stringers uh, to go you know vertically on all four corners also in the front and the back they did put some in from the factory uh, that do go f like uh, front and back but I added the one side to side so this way we've got stringers around pretty much every corner on the interior of it took it flipped it upside down and uh, not only put those stringers in, but got them glued and screwed in place as well. Uh, just a little bit of added strength with the screws. Now the next step I had to move over and that melamine surface, like I mentioned, that was on the back side of the, uh, of the baffle boards, that had to be ground off. And the best thing that I could do it with was a router. I just used a flush trim bit and set that bit a little bit below the deck so it would take off about a 32nd of an inch. Um, optimally, and you know a lot more time saving these should really have been run through a planer but unfortunately I don't have a planer and I don't know anybody who does and by the time I farmed it out and did all the run around and came back I could have already done it with a router so that's why I just move forward and just use a router to get all that surface off and I uh, got all four panels done I started the reassembly of the cabinet uh, I put the front baffle into place that's all glued and screwed then I started adding the supports that will secure the baffles together, the front and rear. The two inner ones are secured to the original stock supports that go from side to side on the cabinet, so it's kind of a four-way brace there. I didn't do that on the outer uh, supports I added because, one, I, I'm going to be adding a, a custom crossover to the bottom, and I have trouble fitting it down in there. And, you know, with the, with the four I added... Uh, especially the three on the left, you know, I'm, I'm covering from the top of the woofer to the bottom of the woofer on both of them. So uh, I think that, you know, pretty much in my opinion should be just about enough. I know some people would, would say, you know, well, you could add another brace from your one brace to the top or the bottom and, you know, just go crazy with it. But uh, I think this should be pretty much 
pretty much good for it. So I put the back panel back on, secured that all into place. Uh, back panel was, once again, you know, glued in place, screwed in all around the perimeter. Even the braces were screwed to the back panel. Uh, got that, brought that back into the house. The stock insulation, foam in there, not too hot on that, but I kind of just put that back into place. Um, started getting it wired up. And you can see here the braces now, like especially as I was mentioning before, in between the woofer from the front panel to the back panel is a solid brace, all glued and screwed. You know, this isn't going to be a weak point where anything can flex here. And down in the bottom of the speaker, I added a Bob Kreitz custom hand-built crossover. This is like an audio grade crossover. You don't find, you know, stuff of this level unless you buy speakers that are like five, ten thousand $10,000 or more. But uh, Bob's a great guy to deal with. He really is. So if you got speakers that are clips and you need replacement parts or upgraded parts, I highly recommend Bob. Uh, got that mounted in the bottom. Put all the drivers back into place. As you can see here, uh, security watch cat was keeping an eye on things while you know the work was being done. And we got everything buttoned up. Oh, also too, threw in uh, a pair of titanium dome tweeters from Bob Kreitz too as well so we got the tweeters in there his custom crossover everything's all fully braced glued and screwed in there the speaker cabinets are like a rock and I gotta say that uh, it's not like a night and day difference but everything now just sounds like it's just more uh, my sound stage just sounds more the separation left and right just sounds more the the headroom I get it's just more. If I'm playing a sh song like Chicago and it's cranked up and all of a sudden a, a saxophone comes in, that thing just jumps out of the mix just the way like an engineer at the board intended it when he recorded it. It doesn't sound like a, a lot of stereos I've heard before where at really high volumes everything starts to get you know very compressed sounding. Um, it's probably one of the best set of speakers I've ever heard in my life. I've only got probably about twelve hundred dollars into these speakers and I think in my opinion they'll rival just about anything with a four or maybe even a five figure price tag and I've also got their C7 center channel from Klipsch which I did the same thing I did the custom crossover from Bob Kreitz and uh, did the titanium tweeter on that so I've got the match set up front for home theater and I gotta say it sounds phenomenal thanks for watching take care hope you enjoyed the video